What's worth more, this bar of gold or this cash? Cash is all people know, but that's not all we know. We're gonna take you on a business adventure on how we got the gold, how we got the cash, and what we're gonna do with it. Okay, so what we have here is some customs gone bad. You think you could guess the value of it? 3500 Jeweler said Max was small. 85. Too small. This is the serious uh, behind the scenes look on what, what's actually gonna happen. 1000 because it's probably not pure pure. 100000 300 And like 400 250000 It's a heavy ass bar, man. 350 We walked in with a bunch of dust. 90% of your following know us, the rapper, jeweler, honest jeweler, man. Take the and shut the up. And we walked out with a bar. Three more diamonds just for a guy walking around. They're walking around with a couple of cameras and a brick of gold. Went from the sauna, the steam room, back to the gym. <laughs> Put that around your neck in a pendant like this big, right? Eh? Hey, no more listening to songs to understand what's going on in a business, right? You're gonna have to actually know what really what it is. And I don't want anybody telling me or telling my company that we're doing something. We're doing something on another level for your benefit to open up your eyes. Point blank, that's it. That's what the jewelry business is all about, sourcing materials, production. There's so many tire kickers and low lives in this business and in this world. That's really what this show is about. If I could pull this business off or not, and you're gonna see how I do it if I do. I hide nothing, I don't need to hide anything. I know how to use the truth as a weapon. This is not the reality that's scripted reality, this is indeed reality. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm doing a that. six well, pure, 12 unpure. <laughs> Forgot about that. What about the timing of that? Yeah, hold it down. Check it out. Holy shit. Uh, it's iced out, bro. You know what I'm saying? What's worth more, this bar of gold or this cash? Cash is all people know, but that's not all we know. We're going to take you on a business adventure on how we got the gold, how we got the cash, and what we're going to do with it. Please, just drop it to my store. Give them the bill, they're gonna pay you. Thank you. Okay, so what we have here is some customs gone bad, some old items, and now we have to make the decision whether or not we want to melt it, reuse the stones, or do we want to keep it in our store and try to sell it, right? We have this vintage, beautiful throwback. Uh -huh. You know the story about this piece. And right. a couple other pieces, the safari pendant, he traded this in. We're definitely gonna melt this, reuse the stones. They're really good quality diamonds. We have these multi-row bracelets. This They've is silver. Been around, They've yeah. been sitting around. It's an older style. Not too many customers are, yeah, you know, are jumping up and down. Jumping up and down. I, I mean, think we'd, ha we'd be better off putting this into a working capital definitely. than having it sitting around, especially when we're gonna make this whole you know, journey here. Absolutely. People don't understand. I, it costs us ten thousand, uh, fifteen thousand. It costs us almost as much as that in some cases. Our margin is low, right? We have to take money and buy the materials, buy the labor, and pay all the employees, and pay everything here to get that custom to sit there and do nothing. Yeah. And sometimes you're putting out ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars out of the business and it's sitting around for months and months and months and months and months, or sometimes years. And uh, you know, that's that's money that could be working. Look at this throwback. Yeah, right here. Last from the past. This Teletubby I had to deal with about three years ago <laughs> when the customer said, I swear I'm gonna pay it off in two months. But three years later, never paid it off. We took this piece on a trade-in, it's a really cool piece, Trill. Trill. I wouldn't want to trade this in because I know someone out there wants to be Trill. All right, when you buy this from us, you're not paying all the labor and the 3D design that it went into because we took it on a trade-in, we're gonna pass on the savings to you. Essentially, people started projects, they put deposits, they went one, two, three, four steps in and then they disappeared. It happens a lot and even though we give our customers, for the most part, two years to pay something off, we're always standing behind our product. So if something happens, we're understanding. We're not gonna just tell you to go kick rocks. We're gonna take care of you and make sure you get something for your money. Yeah, and uh, we give them as much time as possible and we do everything we can. But yeah. on the other hand, you know, keeping our money tied up in uh, some, uh, you know, someone else's custom is not fair to the business either. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort our precious metals that have stones or gemstones or diamonds and that don't, right? Because we're gonna, before we melt all this down, we need to melt the individual pieces and take the diamonds out so we can reuse them, all right? So my assistant Mickey here for today will be sorting these pieces out. We'll be putting all the gold heavy pieces in here and anything with precious stones will go in here. 
And that's it, let's get to it. Basically everything with stones, because we're going to be melting the gold and stuff, but you got to take the stones out before you can melt it. Um, everything with the stones is going to go in this little tin foil tray. I might stop taking them out of the bags actually. Stuff like this. This was actually for someone I know. Grills for a kid named Bobby Nice. I think those are blue diamonds actually. And then just a little diamond grill. That one's going in there. They got to take the stones out. This was actually from our little projects, the little sapphire operation. Maybe a chain take two inches off, so we got the stone still. This is just gold. So all the stuff that's just gold, we can already get ready to melt. Going in this bin. All 10, 10K scrap. Unfortunately, custom projects, sometimes customers, they start it. Maybe they hit some hard times. They don't have enough money to finish it. Sometimes we have to redo a custom. So that's pretty much what's in these bags. We have this huge back plate, probably for a, a cathedral that we made. This thing's gonna be good to mount, so this is going in here. This was probably part of the cathedral as well. And then we got this thing. This thing, wow. I think they were showing you this yesterday, but like if you were to wear it, it looks like a heavy hitter. I would rock out with this, but it's two grams, maybe. Byron. I don't know what happened to Byron. Maybe he exchanged, maybe he wanted a different item. But Byron, we have your piece. It will go to scrap now, but this one is interesting. It has stones on the pendant, but not on the chain. So we could just take the chain out and put the pendant in, but I'll put this with here for now. And this is a nice cool ring too. I'm not sure what happened with this one. Not vintage, but it's got an old kind of look. Just a little designed ring, elephants. Not for us, pretty old. This might've been a trade-in too. I don't think I've seen this on the, in our store or on the website, but maybe someone traded it in. There's a bunch of missing stones already. Maybe a project didn't finish actually, because there's supposed to be stones down here, I'm pretty sure. Going to get stones removed. Got a bunch of little bags, even locks. If people change a lock, we keep the locks. If we don't have use for them, scrap them. Get what we can out of them. So to maximize our gold output, we're gonna have to put some jewelry into the wood chipper over here. There's some pieces that have diamonds and we have to remove them. This is actually all CZ, I believe. But it doesn't really matter. It's a grab bag and, uh, you know, in order to get these pieces ripped apart and taken care of, we gotta take it to somebody who knows how to do it. So we're gonna make that happen right now. I was a young dude coming up and I was finally graduating from Canal Street. The jeweler said, Max, you're smart. Too smart. The old school way was they would break the prongs and try to break out the stones, but very labor intensive, okay? And you wind up cracking a lot of stones. Whereas when you just melt the piece with the prongs, you dip it into water and the diamonds just kind of come out on their own. As long as the prongs aren't there to hold them in. Let's see what happens. Okay, now the stones go out. Mm. Now you can take the diamond like this. Wow. Charges by the penny weight. You know what I'm saying? So, so all this shit. The diamond is there. He's gonna take out, he's gonna weigh it at the end, and he charges by the penny. So this might be a couple hundred bucks to, to extract it. Yeah. I know there's a customer somewhere out there that would love to wear this, but I don't know where they're at. So this is before the Teletubby was melted. We melted for the gold content. I'm sure there's a customer for this Teletubby, but we didn't find it. We need to melt it down. What is it? Anomia. Yes, the black stuff. Enamel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Enamel, yeah.
Yeah. No more face, no more nose, <laughs> no more eyes, that's it. If you spot the red rubies, you know what this is. The Teletubby, yeah. yeah. Used to be pole. Here's the deal. Everything in all these bags was paid for by me. So, some way, somehow, I paid for all these diamonds. Diamonds aren't cheap, they're not free. For everybody out there who has an actual business wants to know what the f is going on, this is what I'm doing in mine. I let all this stuff pile up, then I'm gonna take out the stones all at once, uh, sort out the stones, melt down the gold, get that brick, get that money, reinvest it back into the business. The question becomes, how much gold do I have? Yeah. I think I have over a kilo. All right, you got a year's worth of uh, production that and leftovers from that, right? And now we're gonna sit here and we're gonna turn this into cash. This, of course, is dust. We're gonna take you upstairs and show you where this exactly comes from. So where does the dust come from? Well, it comes from right here. We're producing pieces something like this and during that production process you have to do a lot of filing this is a ring that somebody ordered um, and uh, when you're manufacturing it and you're casting it this is a raw white gold casting of the ring you're gonna get pieces like this that come from the casting tree they need to get filed down clipped so on and so forth now I'm not uh, uh, the best uh, jeweler on the bench here uh, but you know, you get the picture. And after all that, everybody who's producing jewelry from the production, we gather all the dust. And all the casting, the spruces, the pieces, and so on and so forth. From all this production, we collect into little bags, and that's how uh, we get the dust, and we get all these extra pieces. Is this everything? everything? This is everything. Plus this. Plus this. And then this. Wait, so yeah. this is the gold, and then this, this is the dust. The dust. I'm thinking maybe a, a gross weight of 4,500 grams. That's what I would say. All right, so four and a half kilos. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fair estimate. This one is super heavy. But we don't know. I'd say around five kilos, I would hope. That would be awesome. But it's going to be 50% gold, so maybe we'd get two and a half to three kilos of pure. That's why you see this is coming up. All right, guys, so we have this dust. We've showed you how we make it, how we've accumulated. Now, what we do is sort it. In this bag, there might be the workings of 10 projects, 10 small rings, pendants, this dust really adds up as you can tell. Um, but each one of the pieces is stapled to a, a paper, the jeweler's desk, they rip it out and the staples just fall in, right? So there's a couple different things you're gonna, you're gonna see. You're gonna see spruces, you're gonna see pieces of wood, staples, and other unidentified objects really, right? So it's my job here to open up all these bags and pure, essentially purify it, right? Take out all the pieces or of the metal that we can't burn which is mainly staples so you can see a spruce here a paper clip or stapler some wooden thing here whatever this is right so anything that's not a metal is going to be burned when we burn all the dust okay we just can't have any any foreign metals which is mainly staplers that's the only thing in here that the refiners don't like as you can see i dumped these bags separately and you can tell the difference in in color okay see these are really more golden way more gold content in here or they were just working on yellow gold pieces okay this is way much dirtier so this this dust isn't as pure okay this is a really good looking dust right here too and as here you can even see just the little specks of gold within here to compare the rows to the regular This is a really, really heavy container here. All right, so we, uh, we got all our dust in one big pan. What's the next move here? I'm gonna take this extra strong magnet. This is just an, a quick example. All these metals here, no good, but it's, we have this dust here. So it's gonna be a, a couple different processes. We have the plastic so that when you remove it, it drops. Otherwise, it's impossible to get all these things. Once it's on the magnet, you can't get it off. So we must use a protector. And again, having an amount of dust like this is an unheard of, right? This is not something that um, your, your regular, ordinary jeweler is gonna have of what's going on here. So 
the bottom line is this. We have a heavy, heavy amount of dust. The question is how much money is in this pot? Right, and we got Trax Tokyo here. He is gonna help me, um, uh, you know, find out the answer. How much money do you think is in the pot? 150, yeah, it should be around there, but we're gonna find out the actual number later on in the episode. Oh, what's up? We're going to the melt. Today's finally the day, huh? Today's the day. So this is a remnant of the Teletubby that's joining this pile right here. We're trying to make a vast uh, a brick. We don't know the value of it yet. We're guesstimating around 300,000 to 350,000. And we're gonna take it from here. We've got our dust from production. We've got a canceled and uh, forgotten and forsaken project. Correct. Pieces of jewelry that uh, we've been producing for a considerable amount of time, maybe about a year and a half. And now it's time to get this melted down. Yeah, 36 West, I mean, Danny knows the way he's setting up these melters. Yeah, first floor. We had a choice of a couple of different melters to work with, but uh, we made a, we locked it in with somebody who could do a big brick. We don't want to do small, five small bricks. We want the biggest brick that we can fucking get. Just a bucket of dust, that's all. Yeah, this is a real heavy thing to carry it looks like nothing but we don't know how much this weighs in pounds right no it feels like about 20 pounds holy shit. Oh. oh thanks for having us right there look at how this works so we're dumping the stuff in here all right this is the serious uh, behind the scenes look on what what's actually gonna happen oh uh, my bad and then you're gonna pour it all out right there so this is uh, how we're gonna make this big gold brick out of the stuff we have right here and right here. They were taking you behind the scenes on something that even I've never seen, to be honest. Oh, this guy. That's a lot of dust. Two thousand seven hundred sixty-six penny weights on this batch right here. Alright, now we're filming over here. Okay, there we go. Brothers in heaven, in gold heaven. See, he's really some of the bags, but with a big melting operation like this, then I really should be concerned with any of the impurities. It's got a huge dust. It's usually all the smoke and the smell that most of these guys are afraid of. Right. comment that I really wanted to address. You're a rap jeweler now, you got a scheme to make crazy profit, you're still ripping off, da, da, da. but this, this comment this is, doesn't even make sense. It doesn't really even matter. We are all like 90% of you following Noah's the rapper jeweler, honest jeweler, man. Take this shit and shut the f up, bro. Join the gold brick, bro, with your comments, man. Some of you guys out there, you're leaving comments and you don't make any sense, you're gonna end up in a gold brick. basically gives the heat to the crucible right there so instead of a guy sitting there with a blowtorch it's this machine generating heat to go uh, magnetic induction it, it uses magnets to, to get that super heat there goes the boric acid right there to get in there see if we can still find that teletubby oh there's a casting <laughs> all those failed custom projects it's all in this pot of gumbo right here. We don't want to yell at nobody screaming. We're sitting here trying to take you behind the business. It's just that people don't respect it. We're trying to tell you what's actually going on, how this actually works. Things you'd never see in your life, but people don't respect that, and that's why I got to put them in their place. Yeah, so before, you can't pour hot gold into a cold crucible or whatever, so 
it, you warm it up a little bit so it's at a warm temperature. So when you pour the gold in, there's not a big fluctuation in temperature. I think that's what would happen and the gold might um, squirt, kind of like, yeah, it would squirt around, kind of like you would do in a, on a hot pan. If you put cold water, it would just squirt right out. It's a 24 carat Trex MYC logo piece. And we're gonna spice this up, increase the purity. Right up in there. A lot of gumbo in there. About two, three minutes away from a proper melt. The hotter it is, the more impurities that surface to the top, the more gold that floats to the bottom, the better off it is. So that's really what we want. We went from the sauna to the steam room. The sauna to the steam room. There's the logo. <laughs> Everything being knocked off by that hammer is this extra stuff that still contains some gold, but that's, that takes further refining. There's very, uh, definitely little pebbles of gold in, in the borax. It'll be interesting to see what we recover just from the borax. If I had to guess, probably a couple grams, maybe five, 10 grams of gold. Could be a little less. You have to take a hammer, Hammer out each one of these, but we're gonna also bring it to the refiner. Okay, let's kill it. Shit. All right, guys. Uh, all right, that is a heavy bar right here. Went right, from the sauna to the steam room back to the gym. <laughs> so the shaving is once we put it into the machine, if it tells us that the shavings are 58% pure, we can assume that our bar is entirely 58% pure, which is right around 14 karat gold. All right, yeah. so these are the shavings. They're actually still hot. I can feel the heat from these shavings. Let me show them how these look compared to 24K. Okay, so, so when 24K, when you, much Over much here, more. right, obviously, so this, we're looking between 10 to 14. Yeah, and if I had to guess, we'll know right now, but if I had to guess, it's gonna be 12 carats, maybe 12, 13 carats. 52%. And less than 14 carats. That's right. What's 12 carat, I think, right? <laughs> Over 12 carats. <laughs> If, which makes sense. The 50% would be the 14 and exactly 12 carats. Well, this 12 is 12 and a half. 12 and a half carats. 12 and a half. Right there the you go. All right. So our bar, the courtesy of a, of a Demon Co, is a 12 and a half carats. 52%. Pure gold. All right. All right. We walked in with a bunch of dust and we walked out with a bar. 8,200 penny weights. But that's really what it is when you're doing it. Oh. May I? So something important to note, right? We had roughly 9,000 penny weights in, in, in gross weight before all the dirt and the junk was, uh, you know, burned away with the borax. So 800 no. penny weights is what we lost uh, on, on there. And that's mostly impurities. 
Well, the next move is to is to gather the, the cash and so we could uh, show people what, what it's worth. But first, we're going to find out the value of it and what the Manhattan's going to give us. Let's see. And then we're going to make moves on that. We also have an option of putting, if we expect the gold price to rise, which is my, there's going on in the back end that's crazy. So if we expect the gold price to rise, we could get cash and we could put the bar up for a small percentage. It's a very tricky game. We'll see if we uh -huh. can do that. Rick. We made it. What's up, bro? Michael. We made it. <laughs> All right, that's the bar. Yep. That's the bar. Uh, did you melt it upstairs with us? No, nah, we did it with someone yeah, else. Did it? Wow. The Demon Co. Uh, we have uh, an essay. Yeah, yeah. We want to get a, a price on it. And then we'll, we'll, we'll make and then the we're going to see what's up. All right, I mean, I got to drill it though. Yeah, take, right. a, right. take a drill. So he's going to do the same exact thing. Anyone you bring any type of raw bar to, they're gonna to wanna to drill it themselves and test the shavings just like we did upstairs. This is the real business. This is the real Uncut Gems right here. If you're buying this stuff and you're off by 1%, you know, every day, you know, you're gonna be ripped. Because the margin, the profit margin is very small. It's all value. And, and the other thing is, is that, so, which is really tricky, right? They're gonna only pay us for the gold. Now half of that bar is gold, right? Now the other half, is all these other metals, which they do have, they do have a value. So that's really where they make a, a lot of their money on the back end. Particularly the silver, 8% silver uh, an ounce at $24 an ounce. I mean, uh, that's it's a significant amount. What'd you guys get here? 52 one? So. 52.11? Yeah. What do you guys? Somewhere in here. About 51 two. Oh, yeah. What does he have? So copper's about the same. Is this palladium? Uh, yeah, nickel's about the same. Well, it's, it's fractions of a percent. It's not uh, material. Like, gotcha, I mean, you could have yeah. had some stuff in there. You got about the silver's roughly in there. Right, the other ones are just, I'm breaking it out. Oh, they're so small. Yeah, they're so small. They, they don't even compute. Wait, what are we at with the value of this thing to, at today's price? You got today's prices, you got the weights, you got uh, one metal assay, another metal assay. No more listening to songs to understand what's going on in a business, right? You're gonna have to actually know what really what it is. And I don't want anybody telling me or telling my company that we're doing something. We're doing something on another level for your benefit, to open up your eyes. Point blank, that's it. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, take it easy. Let's go to the mezzanine with this. Pretty good, there's a bar. You wanna check it out? It's right here. <laughs> oh my god, I can't even look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it with two fingers. Oh, oh my god. god. There's six and a half uh, pure kilos in there, and uh, there's 12 kilos in total. <laughs> if I were to guesstimate, I would have said somewhere in mid to high threes. Should it say 500? 250,000. You, 285. 400,000 because it's probably not pure pure. 300,000. 300? Uh, I was gonna say around like 400. It's a heavy ass bar, man. How much? 350. 350? 350. Uh, 379 thousand dollars at today's price. 379 thousand dollars. It's gonna be used to pay. Uh, listen, this is about three. This is 379 thousand and about a month's worth of payroll in this company. So, so that ain't really that much compared to what the it is. But it is a big bar. <laughs> what about the timing of that? Yeah, hold it down. Check it out. It's iced out, bro. You know what I'm saying? We're about to go melt this down, get a check, and go spend it with you. What a surprise. Where else are you going to spend? You think you could guess the value of this? No, we don't know what the... Yeah, I don't know how... pure, is it? No, 52%. Six kilos of pure in here. Hey, Siri, how much is six kilos of gold today? What could be more diamond district in business than... What could be more diamond district than walking around? Than walking around with a couple of cameras and a brick of gold. This is the dude right here. Bouillon Exchange. This guy's a real easy guy to do business with, bro. We're gonna show you the exact uh, amount of raw gold in here. Look at that. That's, that's how much. Let me take two. That's how much gold is in that. Yep. Six, six kilos. 
Two and a half, two point two pounds. All right, so for everybody out there worrying about the I word and uh, <laughs> yes, I don't know which words you could say anymore anymore, but the more you say that word, the more scary things get. But yeah, you know, you're getting your gold watches from Luxury Bazaar or whatever it is, or Roman knows what he's doing. You never know, because I think the gold watches, people laugh at me when I go for the gold watch. They laugh at me. But in the end, I think those are the ones that are gonna be really accelerating price. Because once the raw material to produce them, I think they might outpace all that stainless steel sh I agree. You have the dirty raw side, and you have the clean polished side. Let's it's take it to the scale, let's see how much we got. He's the, he's the Kahana 8, watch. 8,187 <laughs> penny weights. It has to be chemically separated after this. Yeah. So they're gonna it's separate the gold from the zinc, from the copper, yeah. from, from everything else. Yeah, so I guess chemical separation, Yes, right? exactly, that's the next step, the assay. So we're gonna do a fire assay. Say where they separate everything and we're gonna have a, a good idea of exactly what we have and the value of it. So this is a $350,000 check for a $350,000 plus bar. We're getting this check now, and then the rest we are gonna get when we melt down and refine the bar further. We did this so we can show you exactly how this business actually works. I hope you enjoyed this video. We're gonna go spend this check with Roman Scharf, and uh, thank you to Vadim and Co. and Kahan and all of our friends in the Diamond District that are true, good, great people to work with. It's another day in the district, you know what I'm saying? Billy, 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 Schmidt.